Hello folks, welcome to uh, this lecture on parenting styles and discipline techniques. We'll start with parenting styles and this is the work of Dinah Baumrein uh, from 1971. Uh, in her research she disco discovered that basically there are four parenting styles and the four parenting styles are uh, explained along the two dimensions of control and warmth and responsiveness. Uh, when we say control, we're talking about essentially discipline, uh, firmness, um, their use of power. Warmth and responsiveness is uh, basically sensitivity, um, being uh, sensitive to the child's feelings and what the child's going through, uh, and you know how quickly they respond and how appropriately they respond. So essentially, control is discipline and behavior. Warmth is in responsiveness is relationship and sensitivity. Okay, so these are the four uh, parenting styles, authoritarian, authoritative, uh, indulgent, permissive, and indifferent, uninvolved. Okay, so authoritarian parenting. What's your best guess? Higher or low control, higher or low warmth and responsiveness? And the answer is high control and low warmth. So these authoritarian parents have high control, uh, they're very much into the discipline, low warmth and responsiveness, they aren't very sensitive. Uh, this parenting style focuses on control as these parents lay down the law and expect their children to follow them without discussion. These parents wish to cultivate in their children hard work, response, and obedience. Keep that part in mind. That's going to come in very important later that these parents wish to cultivate in their children the, the values of hard work, uh, respect, and obedience. Um, authoritarian parenting tends to be a punishment-heavy parenting style. Children with authoritarian parents typically have lower grades in school, lower self-esteem, and less social skills. Let's stop and think about this for a moment because it makes perfectly good sense. Um, authoritarian parents, uh, their children may have lower grades in school. Uh, one of the reasons is um, children kind of get back to their parents uh, through grades. Authoritarian parenting uh, grades are very, very important. And it's not, since the child's not important because there's low warmth and responsiveness, the children tend to resent the grades and the pressure that they're getting in school. So it becomes counterproductive as they let their grades slip. Uh, they let, have lower self-esteem. Uh, one of the comments of the authoritarian parent makes is, uh, you can do better. I know you can do better. Um, you got to be a B is okay, but you know, I know you can do an A, and A is what you can do. So the child kind of gets the message that their best is not good enough, which, as you can see, would lead to lower self esteem. Less social skills. Well, with the high control, uh, authoritarian parents don't allow their children um, the social experiences that other children get. Um, and so as a result, um, they just don't develop socially as well as other children. Okay, what would authoritarian parents do over a bad report card? Well, they would punish without listening to the child's explanation. Remember, that is what authoritarian parents do. They, um, for instance, they care very much about grades. Um, and so when something happens, um, they just focus on the behavior. They don't focus on what's going on with the child because they have low warmth and responsiveness. So um, they're not even going to listen to what the child might have to say. But this is the important part. You have to be careful uh, with authoritarian parenting. Um, the way it's described, you picture them as like little Hitlers. Um, but they they're not that way. Uh, remember I said that they're they're very focused on um, developing a, a good work ethic and, and you know listening and being obedient and respecting authority. Authoritarian parents want what's best for their children and in their view having a good strong work ethic, having good grades, practicing hard, um, that's what uh, is success in life. Um, and so they're so focused on their children doing well and having success that they essentially, they sacrifice the relationship. Um, and so therefore, um, they, they are very loving. 
They, they love their children. In fact, they often get very frustrated because they don't understand what's going on. They're doing all this for the kid, and the kid seems to resent them. Very, very common. Um, but the reason why the resentment is there is because the child actually is feeling neglected. They're feeling that, you know, my grades are more important than me. Um, you know, me being the star football player or trying to be the star football player is more important than what's going on in my life. So that's why uh, they become resentful. But these parents aren't little Hitlers. They uh, appear to be very, very loving, and they are very loving. They're just kind of misguided by focusing too much on uh, the success that they want for their children instead of the relationship. Okay, so let's move on to authoritative parenting. What's your best guess? High or low control, high or low uh, warmth and responsiveness? And the answer is fair control, high warmth and responsiveness. Um, that fair control is a little confusing. It actually should be high control, but when you say high control, it kind of gives the um, impression of like the authoritarian parent that you know they're, they're way up there with control, they're over focused on discipline. The authoritarian parent has high control, but it's fair control because it's mediated or balanced with the high warmth and responsiveness. So an authoritarian parent um, has, you know, control is very, discipline is very important to them, but the difference is, and this is what makes it fair, is that they, they listen to the child. Uh, they take the whole picture into account. Um, you know, they want their child to be as successful as authoritarian parents do. However, once again, the big difference is the high warmth and responsiveness. Okay, so authoritative parenting, uh, they use uh, a fair amount of control as they put high demands on their children. Yet the parents balance this uh, with being child-centered and respectful of their children's thoughts, feelings, participation, and decision-making. So once again, they, these parents also put high demands on their children, but balance it by being, as it says here, child-centered. Authoritative parents will set clear standards for their children, monitor the limits that they set, and allow the children to develop autonomy. Um, so in other words, um, authoritative parents, um, this part's important, they, they set clear standards. It's not fuzzy, but it's quite clear. And then they monitor the, uh, the standards that they set. They, they keep paying attention uh, to the child and making sure they're staying within their boundaries. Why? Because once again, they have high warmth and responsiveness. Um, punishments for misbehavior are measured and consistent, not arbitrary and harsh. Um, so because of its fair control, um, authoritative parents, um, they tend not to overreact very much. They, they'll get angry and frustrated, but yet they will uh, keep their calm. Um, they don't uh, deal out harsh uh, punishments and they later feel guilty about it. They, uh, the punishments are probably already set in place. You know, if you do this, this will happen. Um, and so usually they're already measured out and predicted. So, um, children with authoritative parents tend to have higher grades, uh, be more responsible, be more self-reliant, be friendly. Um, and this is simply because uh, this is the best combination of fair control, high warmth, and responsiveness. So the child knows that grades are important, but also that they too are important. Um, this leads them to be more uh, responsible, uh, more self-reliant. They're, they're friendlier because they also, you know, have a fair amount of social interaction. Um, I just think it's ironic that this is what the authoritarian parents wish for their children as well. However, the authoritarian parents are going about it the wrong way. Okay, so uh, what would an authoritative parent do over a bad report card? They would still give punishments, but would take into consideration this, the child's side of the story. So in other words, uh, they still will punish if it's a bad report card, but the difference is, is that they're going to listen to the child's story and maybe or maybe not uh, adjust the consequences. Um, just because they listen to the child's story doesn't mean that they're going to always believe the child and always adapt the uh, consequences. Um, sometimes, you know, they're going to listen to the story and say, well, I can understand your point of view, but that point of view is not really cutting it, and the consequences, you know, are going to stay the same. Okay, then we have indulgent, permissive parenting. 
Uh, this one should be pretty easy. What's your uh, guess? High or low control and high or low uh, warmth and responsiveness? And the answer is low control, high warmth and responsiveness. Um, so these parents focus so much on the warmth and responsiveness, uh, essentially the relationship that they have for the child, that they don't set limits uh, for their children. Um, as a result of uh, as a result of this, the decision making is left almost totally up to the child. So indulgent permissive parents, we really do a flip flop here. Um, they put so much focus on the relationship. They, they want what I call the warm and fuzzies from their children so much that they sacrifice control. Because when you think about it, I can't um, discipline my child and expect to get warm and fuzzies. Um, so therefore, since I am so dependent on the warm and fuzzies, I sacrifice the discipline control. Uh, permissive parents um, also tend to give their children whatever they want and hope that they are appreciated for their accommodating style. You're going to see a good example of that in the clip coming up. The mother does a lot because she wants to be appreciated by her daughter. She wants those warm fuzzies. Uh, other permissive, uh, so, some, so, so some permissive parents um, give their child what they want uh, to be accommodating, but other types of permissive parents compensate for what they've missed as a child. Um, and as a result, uh, probably give them too much freedom or materials they lack during their childhood. So sometimes uh, a permissive parenting isn't so much that, you know, I'm so dependent on the warm fuzzies, but it's more that, um, you know, they remember what it was like when they were a kid and how they had nothing. And so the parent being high in warmth and responsiveness, um, since they had nothing, they want to give their child everything. Um, and so unfortunately, that's quite common also. Okay, so children with indulgent permissive parents have lower grades, are often impul impulsive, and easily frustrated. Uh, once again, all this makes sense when you consider the, the dynamics of this parenting style. Uh, they have lower grades uh, because for two reasons. Well, the, the big reason is that they're not being, um, and rules aren't enforced to get good grades. Um, good uh, grades aren't really held to high standards, so why should the child try so hard? Um, you know, they're not going to get disciplined uh, for lower grades, so um, why not? Um, the often impulsive and easily frustrated, this makes a lot of sense. Um, these kids are essentially used to getting what they want when they want it. So they're uh, impulsive um, because they're used to, they, they don't understand the word no, and so they just take, take, and take. They think that's the way it is. Um, they're easily frustrated because they're not, um, they're used to getting their way. Um, and so if something becomes too hard, they're not getting their way, they're more likely to give up, especially since if they give up, there's not really many consequences for that. Okay, uh, what would indulgent permissive parents do over a bad report card? answer is, these parents would believe the child's explanation, thus punishment would be minimal, if at all. So in other words, if a child brings home a bad report card, um, the child's likely to have an excuse. Um, one of the biggest excuses, and I'm not saying that if your child says this is an excuse, but, you know, the teacher doesn't like me. Um, and, you know, it could be like, you know, this class is too hard, and the teacher doesn't give me enough attention, the teacher refuses to help me. Uh, often, the uh, children of indulgent permissive parents, they don't take responsibility, they project the uh, responsibility onto other authority figures. So as a result, uh, parents tend to listen to the child's explanation and forego uh, discipline or punishment. Indifferent uninvolved parenting. So this one should be pretty easy too. You think it's high or low control or high warmth and responsiveness? I don't know about you, but my children love to ride alligators. Okay, so indifferent uninvolved parenting. Uh, it's low control, low warmth and responsiveness. These parents provide for basic needs but little else. Indifferent uninvolved parents can stem from a variety of reasons. Um, one reason is that the parents prioritize their own happiness um, over the children's. They, you know, they're pretty self-centered. Um, they don't really think about their children. Um, but other things such as financial stress 
or a lack of support, um, you know, sometimes indifferent uninvolved parents are, you know, just doing all they can. They could be working two jobs. Um, they're really stressed out because even with the two jobs, they're still not making the bill because, you know, parents, kids are expensive. Um, and so they just don't have enough time to focus on their children. Um, and another uh, reason would be uh, like a drug addiction or alcoholism, where the drug and alcohol is more important uh, than the children. Children with indifferent uninvolved parents usually have low self-esteem, are impulsive, are aggressive, are moody. Um, this once again makes perfect sense when you think about the dynamics of these of this parenting style. Uh, lower self-esteem, essentially the parents are giving the child the message, you know, you're not important. Uh, so obviously that would affect their uh, low self-esteem. Um, they're often impulsive because just like we saw with um, uh, the permissive type parenting, um, you know, if there's no consequences, uh, I'm used to getting what I want when I want it, so why not? Um, they're aggressive. Uh, so here you see a little bit of a difference. Um, when these children uh, say no, they don't know how to handle no, um, and they, rather than get aggressive, they tend, um, rather than get frustrated, they tend to get aggressive. Um, and that's probably a result of, since they have no uh, relations, they don't have a good relationship with their children, or with their parents, these children can be aggressive and there's really no consequences to it. It's not like their parents are going to be disappointed with them if they get aggressive. Uh, moody, you know, the low self-esteem and aggressiveness is going to lead to moodiness as well. So those dynamics make a lot of sense. So what would uh, indifferent, uninvolved parents do over a bad report card? These parents would uh, be basically unaware that report cards were even out. Um, they're indifferent, uninvolved, so they're not going to track uh, report cards. Um, so now that I'm at the end of these examples with report cards, um, just to kind of put things uh, into perspective, when I'm working with a family, one thing I might ask the family, well, in fact I do ask the family, so when's report cards coming out? Um, if, if it's indifferent, uninvolved parents, they won't know when report cards are coming out. Um, when they're um, permissive parents, uh, they'll have an idea, but you can tell that it's not a big deal to them, uh, I think in a few weeks. Um, authoritarian parents, um, they will know exactly when the report cards are coming out, and a lot of times they'll even have some type of a mechanism where they're supposed to set it on my desk as soon as they get home. Uh, authoritative parents, um, when I ask them that question, they have a pretty good idea. Not the exact day, but they're um, aware that uh, when the report card will be due. So, just a little insight there. Okay, so um, let's talk about some commonalities of parenting styles. Uh, it is common for parents to have different parenting styles. So it's not uncommon for dad to have one parenting style and a mother to have another parenting style. Um, it's so uh, common that, for example, we know which parent to go to for different situations. Uh, go to mom to ask for money, but maybe go to dad if I want to stay out a little bit later. So that's not uncommon to have two different parenting styles. Um, it is common for parents to use different parenting styles in different situations. Um, like for instance, uh, I'm an authoritative parent, yet uh, when I watch a Gator game, I become the undifferentiated, uninvolved parent. It's like, uh, what? I'm watching a game. Are you bleeding? Is the bleeding getting on anything? Okay, you'll be fine. That's my example of uh, indifferent, uninvolved, and watching a gator game. Um, a mother may be authorita authoritarian over dating, but indulgent, permissive over grades. So it's not uncommon for um, uh, parents to have different parenting styles in different situations. In this, I'd like to uh, point out uh, the balance. You see, what tends to happen is that as long as there's a balance, so say that the mother is authoritarian over dating, well, maybe the dad is a little bit more permissive over dating, um, and so they have two different parenting styles, but together they kind of balance out. And as long as they talk and don't let the child, what we call mom and pop, too often, um, as long as the parents communicate and you know work it out, okay, um, 
I'll say okay that she can go out with this guy, but she has to be in early. Okay, that makes sense. So as long as parents are talking, um, everything balances out, and that's pretty much how it really actually, actually happens. Um, it's common also to have different parenting styles between siblings. So for my oldest boy, I might be more authoritative. Um, with my younger girl, I might have to be more um, authoritarian. Uh, it's important that parents adapt their parenting style to meet the needs of the child's personality. So when siblings have different personalities, this is going to require different parenting styles. So um, good parenting matches the parenting style to the child's personality. However, keep in mind, there's still going to be some uh, variations in that. So, you know, with my son, I might, because of his history, I might be more authoritarian with his grades. Um, with my daughter, overall, I'm more um, authoritative. Um, but when it comes to her grades, I'm more uh, indulgent permissive because see, that she's really responsible and so I don't have to worry about it. My son might be less responsible when it comes to grades. So overall, once again, we're talking that balance. Okay, so overall, having different parenting styles between parents for different situations and for different uh, siblings is fine. That's not the issue. Consistency is the issue. Overall in parenting styles, consistency is the issue. The child needs predictability in his or her's environment, thus knowing uh, to uh, when and which parent to go over certain situations and be able to predict that parent's reaction is consistency. So some examples of inconsistency is the child is surprised because my usually permissive parent said no, and that's frustrating. Or my usually authoritative parent becomes harsh and dismissive. Um, when you think about it, we kind of know how our parents are going to respond. And when they don't respond that way, that's some inconsistency and that uh, really creates uh, a lot of uh, friction. So consistency, very, very important in parenting styles.